I do want to bring in Senator Chuck Grassley, the Republican senator from the beautiful state of Iowa, get his thoughts on all of this. Senator, as you know, uh, almost two weeks ago, the president had a plan, uh, maybe uh, take a, a federal gas tax holiday for about three months. That's about 18.4 cents a gallon. Uh, uh, he has urged states, California certainly among them, that some of the highest state gas taxes. Uh, if, if, if it were to nix that, I mean, that would be more than a dollar a gallon that folks would say. Do you support either, both measures? Uh, no, I do not. And I'm glad that uh, Speaker Pelosi said she hasn't uh, supported. And consequently, since tax bills have to start in the House of Representatives, I doubt if it will ever come before a vote uh, in the United States uh, uh, Congress. But also, uh, I've had some county meetings uh, the last three days in Iowa, and I find opposition even from Iowans about it at the very same time that they uh, complain about the high cost of gasoline. So I don't believe it has support at the grassroots any more than it does in the United States Congress. So what would you advocate? to bring these prices down? Uh, well, uh, in a very general way, why do we have high prices? Because we don't build pipelines, we're not drilling, uh, we're not uh, 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 loaning money to energy companies, we're putting additional uh, regulations on fracting. Uh, I'll bet, except for 20 cents of the $2 increase in gasoline tax over the last year is because of this president's bad uh, energy policies and uh, just reverse them. I'll give you one example that I came to in a couple weekends ago, a person that's got a contract to deliver fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, he says his price has gone up seven and a half cents. He says of those seven and a half uh, percent, percentage points, six of it is directly related to the increase in diesel. The trucking, in other words, has gone up because of the high energy price, prices. So food prices have gone up, not because of Putin, like uh, uh, the president said on, uh, from Europe at a news conference, it's, uh, it's going up because of high energy prices. Well, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, you're right, on, on the, certainly the gas and oil prices, they had run up already 50 percent before the first Russian boots were heading toward Ukraine. Uh, then, it, then it went up from there. But having said that, Senator, I'm just curious uh, as to the administration's posture with the oil companies, doing a lot of finger pointing, refused to meet with the oil chiefs when they were in town. So they met with the energy secretary at the energy department, which I'm told is about an eight minute bike ride. Uh, for the president, if he were to go to the energy department, but given his experience on bikes, maybe, maybe not an ideal time. But I, I'm wondering what you made of that, because the industry and the administration have been at loggerheads. Do you see anything well, that they can work out? Isn't it totally inconsistent to have the bad policy that you just heard me describe to you, and then a year later, go to the energy companies and say you ought to pump more when you've done everything to hurt uh, uh, their ability to look ahead the years that they must if they're going to invest. And then you go to Saudi Arabia and say, tell them to send us more oil when we got it right here under our own two feet. Uh, it just, uh, it, it's laughable that they would have uh, such an inconsistent uh, policy. Uh, let me switch gears, if you don't mind, sir, on the president, because well, he was also talking when he was abroad, particularly in Madrid at the NATO summit, uh, where he volunteered his frustration with the Supreme Court on some key decisions, including uh, Roe v. Wade and uh, reining in the EPA's powers. But he said that he would seriously call for removal of the filibuster rule to protect U.S. abortion rights. What do you think of that? Well, first of all, separate from the pro-life uh, abortion issue, all that, uh, the, uh, the filibuster, the 60-vote requirement in the United States Senate is what forces cooperation and bipartisanship. And if there's anything I hear at my town meetings around Iowa, they say, why you folks can't get along? So I'm able to explain to them that when you have a 50-50 Senate and a 60-vote requirement, the institution drives uh, drives uh, 
uh, uh, cooperation and bipartisanship, and that's what the people want. So yeah, but we don't have it, right, Senator? We don't have it. When we've approved Supreme Court justices, the filibuster's gone. It's a simple majority. That dates back certainly to Harry Reid doing the same when a lot of, you know, Obama administration uh, judgeships were not being approved. But it, it seems like well, it, it's out the window anyway. What do you say to that? Well, I think that uh, you brought up Sen Senator Reid. When he did that in 2013, we warned him that he's going to regret it. And if Democrats are in the minority after the next election, they're going to regret that they changed the filibuster. So uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the other thing is that if you start doing it just for abortion, that's a slippery slope. And pretty soon you're not going to have any 60 vote requirement at all, and everything's going to be partisan, whether it's a Republican majority or a Democrat majority. And people want cooperation in their government. The lack of political cooperation is what's hurting the credibility of the Congress of the United States and the federal government generally. Um, yeah, Senator, while I have you, I, I, I don't know how closely you focused on these January 6th committee. Hearings going on, too soon to tell how they'll conclude. Uh, we might be getting some evidence that it's putting a dent in some support uh, for Donald Trump if he should entertain a run for office again. Do you think that is, that is hurting him? I think it's a little bit too early to tell that yet, but I think some of the evidence that you're speaking to uh, is, uh, is weak from this standpoint. In other words, the evidence could be entirely accurate. But the fact that there isn't cross-examination and all nine members of the committee think the same way and there's not an opportunity to, let's say, for instance, with Ms. Hutchison's uh, uh, testimony about what the Secret Service was doing uh, right. and they want to testify, I don't know how you get an answer until you bring the Secret Service in and, and hear they their might, side and to your of the point, story. They might do that, but, you know, isn't a lot of that Sir Kevin McCarthy's fault? He didn't look for that. And maybe because of frustration with it was going to be a stacked deck, say what you will, but even President Trump has come back to criticize Kevin McCarthy uh, for doing that. Do you think that's fair? Do you think that well, whatever one-sided nature you see of this, there are two Republicans well, on this committee, but, but that, that it's not well, if I, the way it, you wanted it? Well, if I understand your question right, and it's a little bit uh, crackly, but anyway, uh, when Pelosi didn't allow the Republicans on the committee that, uh, that the minority leader right. wanted to put on, and she, she didn't want them, that hurts the credibility of the committee. Okay, so there were, there were other possibilities that could have been mentioned, but Kevin McCarthy stopped it there. But you're right, it's, it's way past that. Let me ask you a little bit. There are some polls also, Senator, that show uh, Ron DeSantis in Florida leading President Trump in states like Florida and New Hampshire. Now, naturally, the former president enjoys about an eight or nine point lead over DeSantis, but he used to enjoy more than a 20 point lead. What do you make of all of this? Well, I think whoever wants to be president uh, on a Republican nomination in 2024, whether it's President Trump or any of the other nine people that have been to Iowa so far, because we're the first in the nation caucus, and Senator Cotton is here next week is just another example, uh, uh, Trump and everybody else is going to have to fight for the nomination. So I think it's too early to draw any conclusions about what's going to happen in 23 uh, and the first half of 24 to get that nomination. Right. But nobody can count on it just because uh, they're a governor of a famous state like Florida or an ex-president of the United States. You've got to fight for it. Do you have any favorites yourself, Senator? Well, uh, we in Iowa don't have favorites because we don't want uh, to uh, discourage anybody from coming to the first in the nation caucus, <laughs> Iowa, at, le at least on the Republican uh, ticket. Now, we don't know whether the Democrats are going to be first in the nation or not because they're having yeah, internal they're debating fights. They're not, at least the yeah. Iowa. It'll be, still be first for at, Republicans. At right? least the okay. Iowa Democrats. The Iowa Democrats want to be first in the nation, but we don't know if the national Democrats yeah. will let them do that. But the Iowa Republicans want the Iowa Democrats to keep fighting. 
to be first in the nation. All right. In Iowa, you agree on that. All right. That's Senator. Great seeing you. Have a safe uh, July 4th weekend. Thank you very much. All right, Chuck Grassley on all of that. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.